If you're a current or aspiring business owner or entrepreneur and you're feeling behind in business or in life, like everybody else is just out there crushing it and getting stuff done and taking names and you're here trying to figure out what's going on or what you should even do next, then I've got a few things to share with you that have helped me in the past to break out of this mental rut and to quickly get back on track. Things that you might wanna consider as well. And it all starts by first understanding an important concept called the comparison trap. You see, the first thing that's important to understand is that this feeling you have of being behind or like you're wasting your life or that it's too late for you is completely normal and something that everyone experiences at some point in time. And it all stems from a desire for growth and change and progress and it's hardwired into us as humans. And we're always looking up at those ahead of us and comparing ourselves to them to get a sense for how we're doing. Sometimes this kind of comparison is even healthy. As this article from Psychology Today shows, the inspiration you feel about someone else's achievements can rev up the most motivation to improve your own life. This is good because it keeps you moving forward and progressing. But there's another side to this as well, which is that these comparisons can be harmful when they leave you feeling chronically inferior or depressed. And this is bad. So you need to find a way to deal with these feelings in a safe and healthy way, as even the world's most famous and successful people out there know that these feelings never really go away on their own. In fact, there's even an expression among the world's richest and most famous people that goes T-I-A-B-B, -B, stands for there is always a bigger boat. Meaning no matter how much you have or do or accomplish, there will always be something or someone out there who looks like they're doing even better. But when you take a superficial look at the outside of someone's life, you don't get to see behind the scenes and all of the realities of the human experience, the pain and the sacrifice and the struggle and the frustrations. The fact is that no thing and nobody is as perfect on the inside as they make themselves look on the outside. For example, the investment banker who's making a multi-million dollar salary, well, they might hate their job and despise the fact that they're having to sacrifice 10 to 20 years of their life working 80 to 100 hours a week and something they don't even like doing. The celebrity might love the early days of fame and recognition and all the money that goes along with it, but grows to absolutely despise the lack of privacy and constantly fearing cancel culture that makes them have to second guess if they should even eat a hamburger. And as for the entrepreneur, well, the reason for their perceived level of success right now could stem from some pretty unhealthy feelings growing up, a lack of confidence, a lack of belief in themselves, maybe being bullied or growing up in an unhealthy family with unhealthy relationships. Plus, no matter who you are or where you come from, no one is immune to all of the other natural disasters that can occur in everyday life, like relationship issues and health issues and other things that just happen, like earthquakes, tornadoes, monsoons even. The point here is that comparison is a difficult and dangerous game to play. It's also a game that you're playing with only part of the picture, only seeing this highly cultivated and curated image, the parts that they want you to see, often hiding the struggle and the pain and all the stuff that, ah, they just don't want to show right now. Which ends up in a situation with you comparing the best parts of their life to the worst parts of yours. And it's easy to do, to selectively pick and choose different elements from other people's lives, wishing you had their house, their vacations, their level of fitness, their partner, their money, their family, their business, whatever. And ignoring all of the parts that you don't want. And that's not fair to you, nor is it realistic. And more importantly, that's not how it works. Everything has a trade-off. For example, the big house is nice, but it requires constant upkeep, attention, and the bigger the house, the more likely it is that there's always gonna be something in need of repair, which requires people over pretty much all the time to keep it up and running. A happy family and good relationships are important, probably the most important, but time invested there means sacrificing personal time and work time and time spent on other things, which is why many of the most successful people, at least when it comes to building empires and stacking billions, often have broken and damaged relationships. Not always, but more often than you might imagine. And as for money, money's great, don't get me wrong, but it will only solve your money problems. And after a point, it does offer diminishing returns on your happiness and feelings of success and accomplishment. But none of this gets shown or talked about. And the way that the media works is to focus on these highlight reels, the accomplishments of the outliers. The exceptions to the rule, like the 20-year-old founder who goes on to become a billionaire. 
Or the social media influencer who becomes the number one YouTuber with 100 million followers and ignores all of those who became successful much later in life, often spending decades working on their craft and going unrewarded and unappreciated and unrecognized. People like Stan Lee, who was nearly 40 years old when he published The Fantastic Four. Vera Wang, who was a figure skater and then a journalist before finally entering the fashion industry in her 40s. Henry Ford, who was 45 years old when he created the revolutionary Model T. But let me give you some more examples. Ray Kroc spent his career as a milkshake salesman before buying McDonald's at the age of 52. Rodney Dangerfield, the famous comedian, didn't catch a break until he was 46 years old when he landed a spot on The Ed Sullivan Show. Momofuku Ando invented instant ramen at the age of 48. Julia Child wrote her first cookbook when she was 50. Betty White didn't become the icon that she is until she landed a role on The Mary Tyler Moore Show at 51. Steve Carell didn't land his hit role as Michael Scott in The Office until he was 42. Harlan Sanders, better known as Colonel Sanders, didn't franchise Kentucky Fried Chicken until he was 62. Vincent Van Gogh didn't receive any formal painting training and didn't even start painting until he was 27. Also, fun fact on Van Gogh, this was in a time when the average life expectancy was 40, so he also didn't have a whole lot of time. Anna Mary Robertson Moses, better known as Grandma Moses, didn't start her painting career until she was 78. And in 2006, one of her paintings sold for $1.2 million. And there are many, many more examples of people just like this who are well into their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, their 70s, and beyond before finally achieving success by society's definition. But the big thing here and the problem with comparison of any kind is that it always focuses on other people, what they do and what they have and what they've accomplished. So next, let me share with you a simple, strategic, and scientific plan to help you take some of that power back and make this more about you and your goals and your dreams and all the things you want to accomplish. To kick things off here, first some real quick and super basic psychological principles that'll help you understand where this feeling comes from in the first place. Feeling behind or ahead or successful or unsuccessful is a subjective feeling, which means it's entirely based on who you're comparing yourself to and in what situation. A study by the University of Warwick found money only makes you happy if it makes you richer than your neighbors. For example, if you have $100, then you probably feel richer than someone who has $10 and poorer than someone who has a thousand. This is why having something like a gratitude practice where you actively engage in writing down things you're grateful for is such an incredibly valuable thing to do. It reminds you of all of the things that you do actually have. Because yes, there are always people with more, but there are also pretty much always people with a whole lot less. Next, you need a clear and compelling goal or at least a vision, something to be working towards. Study after study after study has been done on this exact topic, so much so that we now have irrefutable, undeniable evidence of the importance and the value of having a goal, a vision, a North Star, something to work towards. Now, we could argue back and forth all day whether this goal should be achievable or crazy and audacious, or whether it should be outcome-based, like achieving a certain result, or more systems and process-based, like focusing on the steps that you're going to take every day. But the big thing here is really just having something, something that you're working towards, something that's driving you and pushing you forward. Oh yeah, and you gotta write it down. Sorry, there's just no way around it. So grab a pen and some paper or a pen and a book. Just make sure to write it down. Then the next step is that I want you to think of the single smallest, almost laughably small step that you could take in the direction of this goal, something that you could do right now. Let me give you some examples. If your goal is to earn a million dollars, then your goal today is to Google how to earn a million dollars and then read something on it. If your goal is to lose 10 pounds, then your goal today is to go for a 10 minute walk. Have a goal for a better relationship with your partner or friends or family or kids or whoever, then your goal today is to send them a text and let them know that you are thinking of them. Here's why this is important. The key to success, uh, achievement and progress isn't in doing massive things for a short amount of time. Rather, it's in doing relatively small things for a long amount of time, allowing the habits and skills and behaviors to compound and become part of who you are. The 1% better concept was popularized by James Clear in his book Atomic Habits and shows how if you get just 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. And you can apply this to anything you can think of. So the next question then is where should you start and what are the things that you can do right now so you can end up a year from now in a significantly better place than you are right now? 
now? And the answer to that question can actually be found relatively easily just by taking a look at what the world's most successful people are teaching their kids. Because whether you have kids or not, one of the best ways to see what someone truly feels is important is by taking a look at the lessons and the information and the strategies that they feel are worthy of passing down. And quite frankly, what the world's most successful people are doing and talking about around the dinner table and teaching their kids is significantly different than most of the average or normal people out there. And that's why I put together a video right here with a list on the top 15 lessons that entrepreneur parents teach their kids that normal people don't. So make sure to take a look now and I'll see you in the next video. A large portion of it comes down to the social circles that you're in. Not only are you a reflection of the five people you spend the most time with, as Jim Rohn says, but also it's other people who have the things that you want, 